In this video, we're going to look at the structures we can see on the spinal cord model. So it's kind of a strange model. What we've done is we've taken out all the internal organs and removed those, and we're looking at the front of someone's spinal cord. And we can go up and see where it connects to in with the brain. Here are, is the cerebrum meeting up with the brain stem, different parts. You have midbrain, pons, and the medulla oblongata, which then transitions to become the spinal cord. And as it's way down, it's not gonna exist as a cord the whole way, right on the lumbar region, it's gonna taper off. At this portion, this is where it's called the conus medullaris. And then from there, we have these fibers that are just stringing out from there. They thought it looked kind of like a horse's tail. So this whole set of structures is called the cauda equina. So equina is like equestrian, cauda means tail. So that's what we can see there. Um, on either side of the spinal cord, there's going to be these unique set of bundles. There's going to be some cell bodies tucked together. We've got these ganglia, and your sympathetic fibers are going to be traveling through here. So there's a whole connection of them, kind of this whole, it's called the chain ganglia. You could say that it's called the sympathetic trunk ganglia. There's a whole series of them. There's going to be one that exists on the other side as well, but the model doesn't show that. So this is the sympathetic trunk ganglia running all the way up and down. And up at the brainstem, so where these white structures are, these paired structures on either side, these are representing different examples of cranial nerves. So for lab, just knowing them as cranial nerves. And then the nerves that come out from the spinal cord, okay, all of these actually are different examples of spinal nerves. As they come out around the thoracic region, they're very organized, they come out between the ribs. So this is where we call them the intercostal nerve, okay? between the ribs, run right near those intercostal muscles. So all of these are examples of intercostal nerves on either side. They come out, they're gonna exit through that intervertebral foramen between the bodies of the vertebrae. Something else that we can see, so as the spinal nerves come off, they're not all gonna follow this nice um, organized pattern. For a lot of regions, they're going to come off and they're going to converge into these unique combinations. They're called a plexus. So you have a higher one up. The model sort of shows it somewhat. You don't have to note for lab, but these are representing fibers of the cervical plexus. But then the ones to know for lab, coming off here, going into your armpit area, these ones are going to continue onto your arm. So this collection of nerve fibers is referred to as the brachial plexus. So you have it on either side, you have a paired structure. The next plexus we have is gonna be down here at the lower part where your lumbar, ver lumbar vertebrae are located. So these collections of fibers here, and this weird bundle that's happening, is called the lumbar plexus. So if I had arrows tagging any kind of part of this and say, you know, all of these are part of which plexus, that would be lumbar plexus. And then sacral plexus is all the way at the bottom. You can kind of see, oh, there's the coccyx. And then we have the sacrum that it's coming through all these sacral foramen. So these nerves that are bundled together here are forming what's called the sacral plexus. Okay, so those are the structures we can see on this particular model.